So in this video, I wanted to talk about one of the most important things you can do to optimize how well you learn, and that is to sleep properly. Uh, and there's actually been a lot of studying, a lot of studies on sleep that, that neuroscientists have conducted. And actually, there's still a lot that we don't know and don't understand about sleep. Um, but uh, you know, what we do know is that it appears to be the case that when we actually sleep, and, and actually lack of sleep rather, can can really severely impact cognitive ability. And in fact, a significant amount of learning happens when we sleep. And in particular, uh, sleep is really where information is consolidated. So it's, you know, we learn a lot of stuff during the day, we're bombarded with a lot of facts and, and pieces of information. And it's really when we sleep that that information gets consolidated um, heavily. And in fact, there's been a lot of studies that show that, you know, if you sleep between learning something or sleep at some point after learning something and then get tested on that skill later on, you'll have a better memory of that of that skill or a better memory of what you were taught um, compared to if you didn't sleep but let the same amount of time pass. And so it's, it's pretty clear that there's some type of learning or consolidation of information that happens uh, when you sleep. Now, what most people don't understand, I think, is that sleep deprivation is just really inhibits your cognitive ability, cognitive function significantly. And it doesn't actually take that much deprivation for the result to become quite drastic. So even if you get like one bad night's sleep, that's going to significantly impact your cognitive ability from that point onward. And certainly having a couple of bad nights of sleep in a row um, or getting ins insufficient sleep for a couple of nights in a row is just really going to uh, be severely detrimental. And in particular, uh, sleep deprivation is going to inhibit a number of, of key things. And, and those key things include uh, your attention, your attention span, your memory, uh, both your working memory and even your, your short-term memory, executive function, that's your ability for your brain to kind of regulate, to control impulses and, and kind of stay on course, uh, your mood, I mean, people like they get a bad night's sleep often are, are not in the best of mood the next day, uh, your ability to do basic logical and analytic reasoning uh, can get impacted by sleep, uh, your fine motor skills uh, will get impacted by, by sleep deprivation, and, and over time, even your gross motor skills, I mean, you'll find that um, you know, over time, you'll have a harder time doing certain basic things. And obviously, this fine and gross motor skills may have less to do with kind of overall uh, mental function, but I think it's important to point out that sleep deprivation has so many negative impacts. Now, you know, having said that, uh, the reality is that getting a, a sufficient amount of sleep, rather, is, is much easier said than done, uh, given the number of demands that we actually have on our time, uh, as well as the levels of, of mental stimulation that we're subjected to. I mean, we you know, are often up late at night, you're looking at Facebook and you're, you're on your computer, you're working on papers, you're trying to do many things at once, uh, and that's actually in and of itself not a good thing necessarily. But in our, in our daily lives, we're just bombarded with so much um, information, so much sensory overload, that it can be very hard to kind of go to sleep and get a good night's rest. Uh, and on top of that, I think the other thing that, the other challenge I think we face is that you know, society sort of hasn't fully... Uh, understood the importance of sleep and really hasn't adjusted things to help you sleep better. So for example, uh, you know, we, we look at school and, and at school you have a fixed schedule. You have classes in the morning and then in the afternoon and, and so on and so forth. Uh, but the reality is that many of us have different sleep patterns. Some of us are, are more naturally morning people. Other, others of us are more naturally night people. Uh, but society hasn't adapted and we, we have to, we're kind of forced into a mold of being able to function in a society that may not uh, be optimal for our sleep needs. And so with that, I really want to focus this video in particular on uh, things you can do to kind of optimize your sleep. And how, the question is kind of be, how do we optimize sleep? Okay. And so this is really going to be independent of trying to get a lot of sleep or trying to, you know, tell you that you should be sleeping more. But really the question is when you do sleep, how can you maximize the effects of that sleep? So, you know, one of the first things you should know is that caffeine has a really detrimental effect on sleep and, and obviously people you know, use caffeine to stay awake uh, and, and of course um, what, what you may not realize is that it can take many hours for your body to really fully consume any caffeine or to kind of get rid of it out of your system so even if you have coffee like two or three hours or four hours even five hours before you go to sleep that caffeine will still be in your system for for quite a bit longer, for many, many hours. And so you should really limit your intake of caffeine and especially, um, especially, let me just put a limit here, so you limit intake of caffeine, but especially in the afternoon. So in other words, kind of after lunch, 
uh, you really shouldn't be trying to have much coffee because there's a good chance that caffeine will reside in your system. Okay. Uh, and a similar comment applies to other things. For example, um, nicotine, uh, if you're a smoker, uh, alcohol. Uh, these are all things that actually inhibit your ability to sleep. Alcohol. Okay, so I would definitely recommend um, you know, limiting your intake of any of these substances in general, uh, and especially if you find that you're not getting enough sleep, these things can only hurt your ability to sleep carefully. Uh, the next thing is actually light. Uh, now, our bodies are incredibly sensitive to light, um, and to the point where even if you, uh, you know, are exposed to even a small amount of light, even like LEDs from an electronic device, like an alarm clock, those can inhibit your ability to sleep as well. And, and what I would suggest um, is to really kind of focus on uh, limiting how much light you're exposed to and try to sleep in as dark a room as possible. Pull the shades down, uh, make sure that you have good shades. Um, if you don't get new curtains, it's probably the best investment you'll make. Um, and, and, you know, in general, um, you know, try to sleep in as dark a room as possible. And I think a corollary of this idea is that, uh, you know, staying up late at night in hopes of trying to sleep in the next day, like let's say you, you find that you're a night owl and, and, and you know, you, you do be your best work at night. And that, that may be true, um, but it's important to keep in mind that um, when you try to stay up late at night, you may not always get or catch up on that sleep the next morning because in the daytime, you're going to be exposed to more light. Your, your, your room is going to have more sunlight coming in. And so, uh, you know, you should kind of maybe follow the sun a little bit and put that in yellow because the sun is yellow. Um, so kind of follow the sun, so to speak. Uh, and again, this is this is meant as kind of a tactic. It, you, you know, you have to decide whether you can make this work for you. But I think it's a good thing to keep in mind overall. Okay. The next thing I would suggest um, is to be wary of the temperature in your room. And, and this is something that a lot of people don't realize. Um, let me write that down. Temperature. And in general, what you want to do is, is keep in mind that from an evolutionary perspective, our bodies were designed to sleep in colder temperatures than we might otherwise think. I mean, after all, the thermostat is a modern convenience that you know, our ancestors, the cave people, uh, didn't have access to. So our bodies, um, and in particular, our body temperature decreases at night. And then moreover, our body temperature is linked to our circadian rhythm. Um, and so it's, there's a relationship between the temperature of our body and circadian rhythm. Okay. And it's important to keep that in mind. Uh, and, and so to avoid interfering with our circadian rhythm and, and to really, um, actually I misspelled rhythm, hold on one sec. And to really kind of prevent our, our to, to kind of avoid interfering with our circadian rhythm and to help facilitate that decrease in body temperature that, that happens naturally for us at night, uh, which in turn helps actually initiate sleepiness, it's good to sleep at a temperature somewhere between uh, 60 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. Um, if anything, most people tend to sleep in much warmer temperatures. Uh, and obviously everyone's ideal temperature does vary, so you may need to experiment a little bit here to find the best temperature for you. Uh, if you sleep in a temperature that's too cold, uh, that can also inhibit your sleep, and, and um, but I suspect that in, if anything, you are likely, most likely, sleeping in too warm of an environment. And so, uh, one of the reasons actually it turns out that taking a bath and, and just before bedtime, people often do that as a relaxing routine. The reason it's considered so relaxing is that after you take a bath, your body temperature does go down, and so as a result, that can actually induce sleepiness. So in general, you want to kind of lower your caffeine intake, limit your caffeine intake, limit the amount of light, and limit and try to lower um, the temperature of the room to kind of match the temperature in your body that, that goes down as you are getting ready to go to sleep. Uh, the next thing I want to point out is exercise. Okay, and this is something you want to maybe do more of. Uh, exercise has a lot of other benefits, but in particular, um, if you do regularly exercise, you'll sleep better at night. But don't do it before bed. Don't just you know go, go for like a run just before uh, you're about to go to sleep. And I mean, just before. So obviously if you exercise maybe earlier in the day or uh, if you exercise in the morning 
over time, that'll have good effects on your ability to sleep well at night. Okay? Uh, and especially, I think, the amount of time you should be between exercise and sleep, uh, that should be a, maybe a function of the kind of exercise you do or really what you're, uh, you know, how you typically handle exercise. If you are a kind of person who gets really energized when they exercise, then, you know, you clearly want to avoid doing too much exercise just before you, you go to sleep. Whereas if you're the kind of person who doesn't, then uh, you know you can probably exercise a bit more closer to bedtime. But certainly, overall, all things being equal, earlier exercise is better for you. The next thing you should be cognizant of are your overall uh, meal and drink times, and it's just kind of uh, avoid having a really heavy meal or drinking too much liquid uh, before bed. So avoid too much before bed. Avoid too much before bed. And that's because your body will then start um, trying to, uh, you know, kind of dealing with, with all the, the, the meal and, and the drinks that you, you've had, and it's going to interfere with your body's ability to really fall asleep or really to sleep effectively. Maybe you'll fall asleep, but you won't you won't really get that level of, of relaxation and, and rejuvenation that, that you might typically get from, from getting sleep. Uh, and then in general, I think I, I would recommend uh, that you, you know, overall try to have a relaxing routine uh, before bed. Uh, and, and oftentimes people find that maybe meditating or, or reading or something that's pretty quiet, uh, something that's maybe away from, from your computer. And, and some people even go as far as to start kind of dimming the lights earlier on. So rather than, you know, being exposed to bright lights, uh, just before they uh, they go to bed, they they might engage in a relaxing routine where they'll start dimming the lights. Maybe they'll they'll be in a quiet room or they'll, or they'll read something with uh, just maybe a reading lamp, uh, and 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 so on and so forth. The, the idea again is to kind of have your body be induced to the idea that you should be or getting ready to fall asleep. And, and the the one thing that you know where this comes into play is it's important again to think about our bodies from an evolutionary perspective. If if you think about it. Um, you know, assuming you believe in evolution, which you may not, but, but regardless, you might want to consider this advice. Um, you know, our bodies many, many years ago, uh, you know, we didn't have uh, lamps and light bulbs and electricity, and our, our ancestors didn't have that. And so as a result, uh, you know, nowadays that we have, you know, we have light, we have electricity and, and so on. And, and certainly light, as, as I mentioned earlier, does inhibit your ability to fall asleep. And so the fact that we are exposed to so much electricity and so much, you know, artificial lighting, inhibits our ability to sleep and, and so especially at nighttime whereas our ancestors didn't have natural lighting I mean rather whereas our ancestors didn't have artificial lighting we do we should take that into account when we're trying to go to sleep at night so I think that that's all I wanted to say about sleep I hope you found this video useful and I look forward to making some more on uh, study and learning skills thanks a lot and I will see you in the next video